Five thirty here, so we'll open the meeting. Call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is public comment. This is for anything that's not currently on the select board's agenda. I have something. Um, hang on, I got two. Go ahead, Sally. I'm here for the library. And I just wanted to let you all know that um, last month, or maybe the month before, we finally settled on a new logo for the library. And our new website is up and running as of, I believe, December 30th or 31st. It is fantastic. I encourage you all to go check it out. Go to KimballLibrary.org. And I mean, it's the same information, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And um, we have the, the Grandma Moses project starting. The a small poster is up now in the window of Bell Mains. Um, it's on the newsletter. It was in the newspaper last week, I believe. If you're interested in being part of this project, you can sign up and get your six inch square from the poster and reproduce it on a blank 12 inch square and we'll put it up in the window as soon as we get it. I think there are only about seven squares left. So if you're interested, It'd be really nice to have the select board represented in this project, I gotta tell you. Um, Robin Goodall is going to run for a second term on the board, which I think is pretty exciting. And we have agreed to put up uh, what we refer to as an awning. You know, the, there's a canvas cover at the hospital over the stairs that you go into downstairs we're doing something similar to that off the side entrance at the library so that um, people can come to the, the downstairs door to pick up books, drop things off, and it's, it's accessible, whereas the stairs up to the front door are not accessible. And this will also make it easier, much easier in the winter. And then when, um, when uh, the virus is finally under control, and we can come and go as we please. It will provide space for strollers and other items to be left and not take up space inside the library. So that's that's going to be make a big difference. And I think it'll probably make a bigger difference than we even anticipate because it's going to free up room downstairs for other uses. Um, and then I, when I was asking Amy of she had anything else she wanted me to tell you all. She pointed out that OverDrive, which is the library system, eBooks and audiobooks, um, has seen, for Vermont, has seen a 45% higher use during the first nine months of this year, that, of this fiscal year, which is before COVID. 45% higher use than the same period of fiscal year 19, and before we had to close our doors, and then then after we had to close our doors, the views absolutely, she says, went through the roof. So the library, I think, is continuing to provide all the services that we provide, almost all the services that we provide with the doors open and people are taking advantage of it and using it to help us just get through this terrible, terrible time. Great. So thank you, Sally. Any questions mm -hmm. for Sally? Seeing okay. any okay. Thank you all. I'm gonna go. Thanks, Sally. Thanks, Sally. Sally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are you, are you calling on me? Yes, I did. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your time and for, for the time of your select board. Um, I am here to share with you all um the not a certain number. I haven't actually had time to count, but these past couple of days I've been gathering uh petition signatures. Uh overwhelmingly supportive of two article measures that I hope uh, will be on this year's town meeting day ballot. Um, the first one is, shall the town voters authorize an exemption to the Randolph Center Area Fire Association for real estate taxes on the Randolph Center Firehouse at 107 Furnace, Street, uh, Furnace Road for a period of five years? Uh, and the second article is, shall the town of Randolph permit the operation of licensed cannabis retailers subject to such municipal ordinance and regulation as the select board may lawfully adopt and implement. Um, 
because I didn't submit them today in time for the deadline, it is your, uh, the agency is yours, Madam Chair, and your select board to decide how these articles should be written because that legally binding petition was not submitted. So I, what I'm here to say is that there is the support for these two ballot measures to be included this year uh, on March 2nd, but um, it's, it's up to you as to how they're worded. And actually, frankly, that's, that's how I would prefer it because uh, the second article there is the one that's more controversial. And um, it's basically putting to the voters at large uh, the question of whether or not Randolph should permit or should not permit the sale of, of marijuana in the town. And it seems to me that this language is far too ambiguous uh, to, to offer comfort to the voter that, that the thing, that the marketplace would be regulated. Um, it does say on there that uh, it's up to you all, the select board members, to decide how it will be regulated. Uh, perhaps you would create a cannabis control board uh, for Randolph or some such uh, regulatory arm uh, of the select board. But uh, to me, it seems like maybe you would want to consider including the language. Uh, let's say you, you put it to the planning commission to decide which zones of the downtown uh, should be allowed if this ballot measure passes. Now, this is just to get it on the, on the ballot. And it's actually, it would be in the interest of uh, folks who are vehemently opposed to marijuana and its sale. Uh, to have this question on the ballot to, so that they can vote no. Um, so in the next few months, if, if you, Madam Chair, and your select board uh, does put these, this article on the ballot, uh, there, there will be a public discourse uh, regarding you know, education about this topic so that voters have an opportunity to think about this between now and then, and, and by the time they vote, uh, be well informed. So thank you. So that's actually um, under old business for town meeting and town report that will take that question up. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, I just anybody think else? Okay, not seeing any. We'll move on to approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is the consent calendar. This is a variety of meeting minutes and warrants. I have a couple uh, comments on two of the meetings or minutes. On January 5th, under executive session, could it say that we went into executive session with the town manager to complete personnel interviews? So as the public knows why we went into executive session. And the one on January 10th, I would suggest the same thing. And under adjournment, the vote was three to zero. Tom had left by that point. So I would move to approve the consent agenda with those three changes. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? It carries. New business. First up is a EC fiber appointment. Uh, in your uh, in your in your packets, there was no information other than just a briefing on on this request. Um, there was uh, some confusion in communicating with our reps for Easy Fiber in the town. Our initial thought was, or the initial request that we had received uh, appeared to say that um, the appointment request would be held off until March when the board appoints, um, you know, makes new appointments to the reorganization meeting. Uh, but this week we learned after we had sent the packet to the board that the request is, um, is now to appoint uh, the recommendee, uh, Ian Sears, uh, today, and then again reappoint in March. 
Um, so that is a, a, a bit of a change from what had been described to the board uh, when we send their packet. So leave it to the board to decide. Did we get um, anything with the background or interest? We got nothing, right? Uh, uh, no, we received an email from, from Jerry um, just indicating that Ian Sears is interested in the position. Uh, we do have Ian Sears here on the call. And we also have CJ Stumpf uh, appears to be on the call and Jerry Ward was on the call, but uh, I don't see that he's still logged on. No, I'm still here. Oh, there you are. Okay. Good, Jerry. So Ian, could you just maybe give us a really brief um, background <laughs> that's relevant? Um, Certainly. Hi, I'm Ian Sear. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me a moment to explain my interest in uh, stepping up to serve um, at the pleasure of Randolph as a delegate, uh, um, an alternate delegate um, to the EC Fiber Board. My background um, has been for many decades in um, internet engineering. Um, I'm a student of the OSI reference model. I worked for McDonnell Douglas and IBM and NASA and um, have worked for many years here in Vermont. Um, some of you know me to build websites, which is a quick way of explaining. Um, but I do have a history of TCP IP, the language of the internet, how things are wired, and the, the processes and procedures that go into this. Um, I'm a good friend of um, Jeff Tolbert, who unfortunately has passed. And um, we chatted well before EC Fiber was formalized about the need in our town for something like this. And so when it came up and I heard that he was a, uh, a delegate, I was super pleased. Um, so it's just in light of the change that happened last year, um, I contacted Jerry and CJ and asked if they find me suitable. And um, I've been in attendance of EC Fiber board meetings and uh, I was originally, I, mean, I mentioned some of you seen me around town seven or eight years ago, getting everyone to sign a petition that we need EC Fiber and building consensus and pass that into EC Fiber during its original year. So it's been a long passion of mine. I believe in its uh, benefit to our town. My interest is, is town focused, Randolph, my home. Uh, so I respectfully consider that you will um, approve me as an alternate delegate. I believe CJ and I would like to see Jerry take the position of official delegate interim at the very least until the formal vote in March um, as would as would be normally on the agenda. Um, I'm open to any questions if anyone has any. So what we're being asked today is to fill the an alternate delegate on here. Jerry, Actually, would you like to take that question? Sorry. It's filling the vacancy left by Jeff, which is the position. Um, yeah, if I, I think I can give some background information that hopefully will simplify it, but I, I wish it was a little bit simpler to understand. To tell you the truth, I don't think there's any obligation to do anything tonight. One of my earlier expectations was that this would be taken up at the March meeting, which is when it usually happens by statute. Um, I'm talking about the enabling telecommunications statute that brought the communications district into existence. And so they require a form that just what the select board has to do every year that, dele that designates who the, the main first delegate is, they call it representative on the form, and up to two alternate delegates. They all have equal powers, if you will. They all have equal responsibilities. There's really no difference from, the rep from our perspective. It's purely a statutory quirk, if you will. So we have two functioning delegates, CJ and myself, there's no need right now, but it's available as an option right now to appoint a third delegate. And that would be 
Ian or someone else if you want to open it up to the public. So that's one choice that you could make. But again, it's not mandatory by any pressure that is coming from us. And I think I'm speaking for CJ with that too. Yep, um, Jerry's correct. This was discussed yeah. briefly on the EC Fiber Board, along with the fact that there was a little bit of confusion due to language in the legislation, but uh, the board's discussion supports what Jerry just said. So if you're interested in, you are. If you're interested in two paths, there would be the least amount of bureaucratic hassle, if you will. You could, I think you could just, if you like this current slate, just approve them and go slow on submitting it in March. And then you'd be done. <laughs> you wouldn't have to have another meeting. And I think that's totally legitimate. Um, the only possibility would be if you have new select board members who come on who you want to retroactively want to review the decision because you'd have some new board members, presumably. Um, well, I'm not hearing that we need to take any action tonight. Uh, right. I'm just, I'm just suggesting if you don't want to have to deal with it again in March, there is that option. You could take some action tonight. And I'm not pushing it one way or the other. It's your call. Tom? So hopefully that makes it more clear and not more muddled. Tom, you're uh, muted. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, just to get some some clarity. So all three of you have equal voting powers at any at any meeting, even though the alternate suggests that there are like substitutes if you can't be the prime representative, Jerry, is it, am I understanding that correctly, that you all have equal voting? Yeah, the way the way it works um, is that we try to coordinate with them among ourselves to make sure that at least one of us is there at every meeting. Okay. And, and sometimes there's two or three of us and we work it out collaboratively about who's going to be the voting delegate that, that oh, night. Okay. okay. So only one of us votes. We never have votes opposing each other. We have, it's totally dependent on us to work out consensus. Okay. If, right. if there's more than one opinion. Okay. Thank you. Are there board meetings between now and uh, town meeting? Um, there is one and possibly two depending on town meeting date. Yeah, they're the second Tuesday of every month. And to be clear, these board meetings are open to the public. And so um, it's always good to have people attending. That's just kind of a public service announcement. So to the board members, uh, anybody want to take action tonight or do you want to wait until March? I'll make a motion. I'll move we approve adding the MCers to the EC fiber alternate list till town meeting. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up is a request for a variance for wastewater ordinance from FAE. Uh, we should have our water superintendent on the call, but I'm not sure if he's if he's on. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Chris, you on? Yep, there you are, Chris. Thanks. Uh, Chris, would you mind introducing the the water variance for the proposed construction in town? Um, yeah, uh, so Faith Sherman's property currently address Zero South Pleasant. This is his parcel across from the um, South Pleasant Cemetery just beyond um, Fairview Street. And the issue is, is that he wants to put in four uh, three bedroom homes and per the ordinance he's required to he's within the store district the issue is is that where he's located 
will not tie into the wastewater system in a manner that doesn't um, either serve as a heavy financial issue, like a very expensive pump station on his end. And in order to do that, it would also tie into our force main line from Beanville, which poses future problems for ourselves. Um, the other issue is there's no gravity feed line. Uh, the nearest one is down on the end of Maple Street and it's several hundred feet away and it just um, elevations and that type of stuff wouldn't allow him to do that. Um, They've already looked into and had an engineer do the site testing. They can put on-site septics for all four properties. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of it. There was a letter from the engineer that kind of had a little more detail. Um, I don't know if you guys got that or not. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we have it. <clears throat> Chris, did this go to the Water Sewer Committee? Uh, it did. The letter wasn't prepared yet, but I had asked the Water Sewer Committee at the time if they wanted to discuss it or if they wanted to wait. We did discuss it. It did pass with a motion um, to allow the variance. Okay. Any questions uh, they, they for Chris? Sorry. Chris, how far would it have to be pumped to feed in the gravity feed at Maple? How many feet is that, roughly? Um, I'd have to do the map. I'd have to do the looking on the map, but it's um, it would be a couple hundred feet. Do we have any estimates of what it would cost to do the different options? I notice the engineer carefully avoids that. Uh, I do not have an estimate. Um, the other kind of kicker there is that if he sells all four parcels, um, per the ordinance, we end up owning the pump station. And on average, it costs us about $1,500 um, a year to maintain a pump station. And if you figure, four parcels at 10 units um, a quarter. So that'd be 40 units times the sewer rate of 1250. And then that's $500 for one quarter and times that by four quarters, you only come out with revenues of about $2,000. And if we have a pump fail or any major maintenance issues with that pump station, it could end up being more of a, a hassle. Um, I guess my point is that it's not super beneficial to the wastewater district to have a pump station there. Um, that's just from my end of it. Um, I can request that the engineer supply some estimates if you would like to see those. We're we just talking about wastewater, right? We're not talking about town water. Correct. He's already done the water allocation. Um, okay. That should, whoops, maybe I didn't send the water allocation one. My, my apologies, Adolfo. Yeah, um, yeah that's why I wasn't sure. I'm, I, I figured it probably be only wastewater. Yeah, no, it's just wastewater. He, uh, my bad, I'll have to send it for next month, but there was supposed it's to be okay. a water allocation that was also approved. All okay. right. So, from personal experience, we've done this before because I was actually one who'd had this similar situation done where there wasn't a line close enough to me. So, you know, I wouldn't have a problem with, uh, you know, Granis. That's just my opinion on the subject. Is that a motion? Could be, I guess. You want it to be a motion? I can make it a motion. <laughs> Go for it. All right. So I would make a motion that we grant the request. Second it. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Could I discuss it, please? Yep, go ahead. Uh, my concern is from the town's point of view, if we're going to pay for the sewer plant, there's a reason we have that in the ordinance that they have to hook up. And four properties would each one of them would 
I'd say undoubtedly use more than 10 hundred cubic feet. So that's a low estimate as to what they're going to pay. Um, from the town's point of view, I would think we would want to have everybody hook on the can to pay the bond we have. I, 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 would, I would agree with you in general, Pat, but from the documents that we received and from the, the, from, from the, uh, the, the sort of the testimony that Chris gave during our water sewer committee meeting, it, it seemed basically like you know, if, if we deny them this request, we've re we're going to render these sites undevelopable. Um, mm -hmm. We really don't have, it, it's not a matter of getting them on the system or not. It's, it's, it's really a matter of whether they're going to be allowed to develop these and put homes on them or not. And so we're, we're not going to lose out on the opportunity to add folks to the wastewater system if we deny this. In addition to that, you know, you'll pick up a lot of tax revenue on the properties that are going to be developed there. Absolutely. So that's why I, I don't have a problem with it because we really don't have a good access point. And, you know, I don't know whether we really want to take on the burden of maintaining a pump station if there's not a lot of money in this for us. So I'd much rather see the tax revenue from the developed properties and kind of wash this off as a lost leader. Chris, the way the ordinance is written, do we have to take over the pump station or, or can we if we want to? So it would, it gets tricky there. You could force them into a, um, like a homeowners type association. But again, you know, I don't know if that would hinder the development of the property. Um, and it, I just don't, you know, the ordinance do say that we're supposed to, but again, if they were to, if we were to say, we'll, you know, no, we require this, but they go that route or they choose not to go that route, then yes, we are required to take it over because it's four separate connections. Um, that's where it gets a little tricky there. There's a little more detail would have to be figured out. Um, and it ends up going into the, I believe that dips into like the zoning and construction permits of it all. And I think this is a reasonable exception. I don't think we're setting any kind of precedent. This is kind of a, an unusual circumstance. Any I, guess, other I guess I would like to see more cost figures and so forth before I favored it. So. Okay. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second on the floor. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. You're muted, Barry. Aye. Opposed? No, I think it's premature. Abstain. Motion carries. Next up is a request for an increase in a waste wastewater allocation for New England Precision. So this week we are uh, getting a lot of good use out of Chris. Uh, Chris, so thanks for joining us today. Um, Chris has been working with uh, the good folk at New England Precision uh, on their proposed plan to increase operations. Uh, they approached Chris um, some time ago to work out a uh, potential increase in their discharge. Um, so Chris has been working with them. And Chris, do you have any more details to share? So basically going into COVID, they were already kind of pushing up against their, I think it's 748 um, gallons per day limit. And one or 765, sorry. And then once COVID struck, they manufacture certain little parts that took off, plus they received some new contracts. And they've actually been operating above their allocation of 765. And they immediately approached me and wanted to make it right. And so this has been in the process. Um, 
that's an allocation charge of eleven hundred dollars or eleven seventy five. There's would be no change to their BODs, any of that type of stuff. It's just the additional gallonage um, for treatment. Uh, they've actually done a fantastic job of lowering their BOD numbers and the, what they send us to make it a better quality. Uh, so that was kind of, you know, this is a little more straightforward. Can I ask some questions of Chris? Yep. They have their own water supply, right? No, they do not. They su we supply the water. So we supply the water. So there'd be an access fee for water too? Um, I believe, and I'd have to double check this, um, but their water allocation is far above that because they didn't used to have a wastewater restriction. They used to have their own leach field. And if you remember, they always used to have all that steam pumping off. Um, so they used to boil off all their process water. This is for, um, this is for their process water discharge. This isn't for their, um, like their bathrooms or hand washing, that type of stuff. This is for the water that's used in cleaning parts, manufacturing, uh, that type of stuff. So this is a separate um, meter? Sorry, say that again? Is, that a, is it a separate meter then? Yes, they have multiple meters because of how they're set up. So they wouldn't need more water, you're saying? They don't think they would. Yeah, I would be happy to look into it to make sure that the water allocation is still good to go, but this is for their processed water. Yeah, well, I think that would be worthwhile. Look at least checking. Do they have a written discharge agreement? I see you said they have a discharge agreement. Is that yes, they do. The, the, this would be an amendment to that agreement. And do they pay a higher rate for that, or is it the same rate? Nope, they pay. So it's based on the BOD numbers. If they go over a BOD of 250, um, they have to pay a surcharge to us, which they generally do pay that, you know, they, their Cliff would have to probably could help me a little bit with what their bills are, but I know they pay, you know, they pay a fair amount over the normal rate. Based on their BOD. That is correct. And, and their, the access fee is $5, right? For wastewater. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions on this one? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Perry, you're muted. Okay, I'll make a motion to, to uh, grant NEP's request to increase their gallonage to $1,000, 1,000 gallons per day. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Next up, we have the special appropriation request for the Orange County Special Investigation Unit. So earlier this week, um, we received a request, or the request was submitted to Emory from the uh, Orange County Sheriff's Department. The request had indicated uh, that the Sheriff's Department had uh, suffered a loss in grant revenue that helped to fund the um, Special Investigations Unit. Uh, they had been working with Emory on this particular project. And so um, Emory, if you're on the call, if you'd like to speak more about your communication with them. Certainly. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. My video seems to be out, but uh, just today I just I received a letter from them. I was speaking to their executive director for an amendment and a clarification. The special investigations unit is actually part of a larger nonprofit. Um, 
and they want to keep it separate and be treated as separate entities. So they would therefore like to amend and clarify their previous request to include a special appropriations for each organization, the sheriff's office, and the nonprofit, which is a really long acronym. And I can say it if you'd like. <laughs> So essentially the request that it initially arrived to the town was that the Orange County Special Investigation Unit was asking for approval from the board to be added as, uh, as a special appropriations recipient in the amount of $1,500. And then today, uh, on the day of the meeting, a second group that is associated with the Orange County Special Investigation Unit, which is not a part of the Sheriff's Department, but is its own nonprofit organization submitted a request saying we are also a part of this unit. However, the initial request didn't include us. We also want to be considered for a second $1,500 request. So it's, it's a, it's an 11th hour request from a nonprofit that we had not heard of before, but claims works with the sheriff's department. Correct. Me if I'm wrong, but didn't we vote that special appropriations had to submit signatures and petitions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Make these guys think they're not part of that. Yeah. Their initial letter to us uh, asked them to exclude our nonprofit from the collection of signatures. But we already voted to make people that wanted to be on that list have to get the signatures. That's right. I don't think that's fair. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And I don't, I don't get the distinction between this second nonprofit that's come in at the 11th hour it's separate from the special investigations unit and is the special investigations unit in its own right, a, a nonprofit that's not part of the, are we talking about two nonprofits here? I, I, well, I, I don't know, it's not clear to me, but I, I think the, the point that Trini made is really- The most well, germane, yeah. Yeah, exactly, that they're coming to us with a request to not have to put in signatures and. I, I don't, I think we specifically want, wanted that. And so I think we should deny this request. Mm -hmm. But we always have the option of doing it ourselves if we wanted to. True, but I think we were clear in our, in, in our intent. And I, I don't want, I personally don't think the select board should be in the position of approving or not approving on a case by case basis, people who come in without signatures, I think. We have a pretty good system. Yeah. It's reasonable. It's fair. And I think we should stick to it. Yeah, that could open up a whole Pandora's box if we go that route. I, I just have one quick question. What does the Special Investigations Unit investigate? They so focus on sex crimes. That's what I thought. Okay. Tra sex trafficking, sex crimes. Yeah. Pornography. Is the public allowed to make a comment just to clarify what the special investigations unit is? Would you like me to answer that? If, if Trini is answering, it's she's muted. Um, well, I think we've got the gist of what it is. The, the issue isn't really what they do, it's that any nonprofit, no matter what they are, coming to the town asking for special treatment seems to be unfair. Anybody want to take action on that item or? Hearing none. I'm not even clear what the question is at this point what the other group is. Do we need a motion? We don't need a motion, we can pass on it. Seeing none, we'll move forward to the proposed bids for the East Randolph Hall. Uh, the town had released a bid um, in working with the East Valley Community Group 
to uh, request architect bids for an assessment of the of the hall in East Randolph. The town received uh, four bids, three of which arrived before the deadline. One arrived two hours after the deadline, but um, it arrived late because it, it had been sent days in advance, but was from the, the markings on the FedEx package, it shows that it was in transit since December 31st and only arrived two hours late on the day of the deadline. Um, we did also receive a fifth um, bid this week, uh, which has not been shared with the select board. Um, the challenge with the fifth bid submitted is that it was submitted uh, over a week after the, de the initial deadline and then also after the amount um, had essentially made, made public of the initial four bids. So there's some challenges with uh, considering that bid, uh, even if it's far lower than the initial four. They're just there, there are legal issues involved with that. Um, because of the varying amounts of the, the bids, they, are, they far exceed the budgeted amount between the town and the East Valley Community Group. Um, so one of the strategies that um, has been, you know, is being considered is that the select board direct uh, town management and town staff to essentially reapproach all of the bidders with uh, the same information to say, you know, uh, would you be willing to itemize all of your costs so that they're not just lumped in, into a um, into one pot, and then also to ask if they would be willing to allow the town and the East Valley Community Group to to tailor what their proposal would be so that we can cherry pick from the itemized items list and potentially have a uh, project that falls within our budgeted amount. So we hope that the board would consider authorizing town staff and the East Valley Community Group to take that route to try to continue forward with this project. Can I offer one more comment, Adolfo? Hang on, John. Okay. So part of the challenge here is that um, how how the pricing should be done wasn't specific in the proposal. So the way that the bids came in, they all priced in a little bit different format. So it makes it a little bit challenging to compare bids uh, for some of these, but with having them so far over, uh, getting the data in by task will allow development of a scope that can move forward so that there's at least some forward progress made. Mm -hmm. um, do you have more to add, John? Um, I was going to also say that I believe the intent is to still down select to, to one of these, not, not cherry pick from one to the other uh, for specific tasks. Oh, you'd have to pick one contractor. Oh, yeah. Right. But it allows you to only move forward with a set number of tasks instead of having to award the entire scope. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. I may make a comment. Mark. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Um, the four very high bids were all not really addressing our scope. Um, they all had a lot of other stuff in there. Of course, there were also uh, some, some very high costs within the, the scopes that they proposed. But um, the, the real problem with the high, high bids is that they had included a lot of things that we didn't ask for. That, that seems to argue then for exactly what the the administration is proposing, which is um, to go to this itemized route and then work together to cherry pick those things that we want done within the itemized bids and choose the, not necessarily the lowest bidder, but the bidder we're most comfortable with within the context of what we decide the scope will be.
Any other questions on the case here? If not, would we'll entertain a motion. Would I'd like to move, move that we authorize the staff to work with all bidders to request uh, itemization of the bids and a resubmission. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion and a second. I have Hold a question. Them, yep, go ahead, Pat. <laughs> Sorry. Um, would that, would the intent be to get a new scope and then rebid that? Or what's the intent here? To work with only those four bidders anyway? The intent is to get a pricing by task item so that you can then figure out how they compare better. Some of them are like lump sum. Right. So we need to get it broken out. It's not to, we're not developing a whole new scope of work because that would require a whole new bid put out to anybody that wants to bid. No. We're just going to ask the four that have submitted to refine their bids in a format. And, and as, as Mark suggested, it, it sounds like, um, it, it sounds like some of the bids were way beyond the initial intent scope wise. So this will help really focus things by taking the itemized approach. So that is, excludes the fifth bidder, which was like half as much from being involved. I hope all the bidders would be invited to resubmit. Including the, the one that was a week late? Actually, that one came in on Friday. It wasn't really a week late, but- uh, You late. can't allow the fifth bidder in. I mean, he are, they already knew what the others bid when they put their bid together. You're going way out on a slippery slope with that one. Yeah, that's true. They um, were actually the, uh, they were the late, late bidder here, but they were actually the, the, the folks that had initially quoted the entire effort to begin with. And, with whom the project had been scoped earlier they to develop an approach. Well, they, they should have gotten their bid in sooner. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what is the name of that company? Uh, it is Scott and Partners. Hmm. No, that that is no. one of the groups on the list. Oh, you're yeah. right. They're on it's the list. Right. Yeah. It's Vermont integrated. Hmm. Well, it... unfortunately, they needed to hit the deadline or before the bids were opened. Once the bids are open, they're public, so you can't you can't then take one that comes in a week later. Excuse me. This is Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Hi. Can it just be reopened and put out to bid again? And then clarify exactly what we want in the scope. And that way, the uh, company that gave us a bid in February and then did it again now in January could be included. That, that's actually an excellent suggestion because all the bidders were far above budget expected budget it, it's not the, the challenge is that um, the, the challenge is that we're going back to ask the bidders to break out their bids into you know, they essentially all received the same RFP or request for bids and they reviewed it and they responded based on what we had made public. If we don't like the price, um, you know, it's, it's one thing and we could cancel because we didn't like the price. But if we then reissue while we're having this conversation now with the intent of, well, we like this other company more because they have a lower price and then go with them. And now we're creating a, a scenario where we're, we're, we're rigging the game. We know that they were late. We know that they 
have a more favorable price. We're going to switch the, um, the the bid request to tailor it to what they know is what we want. Um, and, and that okay. there and there lies the rub. So, so what we are can, the only, oh, sorry. Hang on, Mark, please. What we can do is we can we can uh, not accept any of these bids and develop a new scope of work. So it, which it sounds like from Mark's comments that somehow the bidders have interpreted that we want stuff that we don't really want, which kind of leads to maybe your scope, maybe the scope that we all kind of wrote together isn't as clear as it could be. So you, you we, can, we can not accept any of these bids, redraft the scope of work and put it out again. I think that would be a, a good way to do it. Um, frankly, the other four didn't didn't really address a lot of the things, and and they they certainly included a lot of things that weren't in in our intention, or weren't in the scope. So um, it'd be it'd be great to to try again. I think. That that, that was exactly what I was going to um, suggest. It sounds like the original. Uh, scoping was vague or ambiguous enough that um, we got a, a lot of mixed bags in the uh, in the bids we got, a lot of a mixed bag in the bids we got. And I think if we're more precise about what the scope is and resubmit um, the RFP or ask them to resubmit, would be the best way to go. Yeah, I, I, I think actually what what uh, the people did was we got sort of boilerplate bids and uh, yeah. they included a lot of things that they ordinarily do but aren't necessary. Like, for example, mechanical for this building, which has a new heating system. We don't need mechanical, really, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like John and Mark would like to take the existing scope and redraft it. Love Bingo. To. <laughs> <laughs> so uh looking for a vote from the board then to not accept any of the votes and authorize a rebid i'll move that we reject all four bids because they're so much higher than the budget is and authorize rebidding I'll second. I'll second that I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Uh, next up is grants. Uh, none to bring to the board today. Great. Town meeting. We are accompanied today by our uh, town clerk. Um, and uh, Joyce and Cliff and I have been talking about um, what town meeting 2021 could look like. Um, the state legislature has, uh, at least the, uh, the House, not yet the Senate, has passed a, a bill uh, on what town meeting could potentially look like this year. And um, if the board would like, we have Joyce uh, on the call. Yeah. So, uh just a, a quick question on, uh, we had Jay presenting the two petitions earlier that have the signatures. Today, the deadline, Joyce, or is it tomorrow? Deadline is today, uh, it was at by five o'clock. Okay, somehow I had the 15th in my head. It's probably because it's my kid's birthday. I think it may <laughs> have been the 15th last year. We want to be consistent. Keep us on our toes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, so the, I, I don't know if Jay wants to comment about the legislation. My understanding of what the legislation is, is that um, it would give permission to the select board to choose to potentially move town meeting day to a date uh, later in the year when potentially it would be safer um, due to the current COVID-19 situation. Um, 
And I believe that with moving the meeting, you would also potentially be moving the voting piece. Um, you do also have the option of still voting the Australian ballot piece, town meeting day, March 2nd. You can have your meeting um, just call the meeting and then recess it, and then you can recess it to a time later, um, but you would have to, at that time, specify that you are recessing this meeting to a date specific um, so that um, you don't have to rewarn the warning, and then you can meet at that later date. Um, and basically, to be sure that people know about it, you just need to be sure that you put advertising out there so people are aware that you have moved the date. Um, and so if you were to warn the warning right now, um, stating that we would be meeting the Saturday, uh, February 27th for our meeting, um, but make it known to the public that the intent of holding that meeting would be to just initially call the meeting to order and then to recess it so that we could meet later in the spring um, but then still also go ahead and vote the Australian ballot issues. Um, Act 162 from last fall, um, if the, I don't recall if the select board voted to vote all uh, public questions and uh, Australian ballot questions by Australian ballot. If you did, then we could still proceed with voting all that on, on Tuesday, March 2nd. Um, and then that would be done. And you wouldn't have to deal with that later on. Um, then you could hold your meeting later and then discuss whatever you wanted to discuss. Um, you could discuss the results of the vote. Um, and if pe people want to bring up other issues, they could bring that up. Um, and um, I, the Act 48 also, I believe, gives permission to the select board to authorize me to mail ballots to all voters. My recommendation to you is not to. We have five ballots. Not everybody gets all five ballots. Some people get two, some people get three, some people get four, some people get five. And if I had to send ballots for everybody, it will be a nightmare to try and pull it together and get it out. Um, I would recommend that we send out something to all voters, letting them know that we are encouraging them to vote absentee, that it is a simple process for them to get their absentee because they can call my office, they can fill out a form, drop it in the drop box, they can come to the door, ring the doorbell, fill out a form, we'll give them a ballot, um, and they still will be able to vote on town meeting day. Again, it will be similar to what we did in November and in August, it will be limited capacity, um, but they still will be able to vote in person. Um, you know, and and you know the the usual COVID restrictions that we have will be in place, um, and we'll we'll be spacing everybody out. Um, I believe we can manage that um, as we did before. Generally, with town meeting on a good day when it, we don't have rain and snow and everything else we'll have anywhere from 800 to 1100 people who will vote. When we have bad weather, we'll get anywhere from four to 600 people to vote. Um, and I think that if we were to let people know that they have the option of getting absentees, if we advertise it well, if we send out the postcards to let them know, um, I think you'll have a, a, a vote similar to what a bad day for town meeting would be. I think you'd get at least 600 votes, possibly more. Uh, Joyce, so we have multiple pieces, sorry. right, Joyce? So the, the board uh, already voted to go with Australian ballot, uh, and we voted on... Um, candidates didn't have to get signatures and uh, the rest of them required signatures. So what you what you need us to decide tonight um, was whether to send the postcard to everybody, letting them know 
how they could get their ballot if they wanted to do absentee or if we go by mailing ballots to everybody. Is that the decision you need? Well, until the legislation is, is signed by Governor Scott, this is, this is all discussion. This is just potentially what can happen. Um, you know, um, last I heard, I believe it passed the Senate and had gone to the governor. Um, I may be wrong on that. Um, Joyce, I think it's, I think it's still with the Senate. It's still with the Senate. Yeah, okay. I think it's still with yes. the Senate. Yeah. yeah. So we but, have to wait for the, the Senate to go through their process and then wait for it to go to the governor. Um, you we know, from, don't though, right? We don't have to, right? We could make the motion pending. You can, yes. The governor yeah, you signing. can make a motion that if, if this legislation's passed, this is the direction we would like to take. Well, my concern is otherwise we're into February. Yeah. Right. Um, just, just to be clear, um, it doesn't mandate mail-in balance. It gives towns the option. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Right. And, it's not a man. The way the legislation is written right now, it's it, it is a you know it gives the select board the option, option. to to man to to do it. It's not a mandate that they have to go out. So I, um, I have a question going back to the the multiple ballots. Um, why is it that there are so many different um, combinations of ballots depending on where someone is? It, is it related to the village and East Randolph, Randolph Center? Et it is related to the water, sewer, and police districts. Okay. Yeah. Not so everybody's does. in the water district, not everybody's in the sewer district, not everybody's in the police district. Right. Some yeah. people are in the water, sewer, and police. Some are water, sewer. Some are just sewer. Some wow. are just water. And, wow. and you know, so yeah, it becomes do a Randolph. nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. it would take a reporter, Tom. It would take a reporter to stuff those ballots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, one other thing that hasn't been mentioned is, um, and I, I'm not sure if this is in Act 162 or not. I believe, but we are um, obligated to have a pre-town meeting informational session on the warned items um, 10 days or sooner before the Australian balloting. Uh, we do that, Tom. Um, we we that refer it locally as like the, the budget meeting, but really it's a, it's a public hearing right. that we do every but year. Uh, presumably we'll do that by Zoom. Yes, you can do that by Zoom. If yeah. <laughs> The public hearing is required by law because we vote by Australian ballot, and and the the meeting needs to happen within the t uh, ten days prior to town right. meeting day. Exactly, exactly. And it can be done remotely. Uh, there is no requirement that, that you have to have a physical location for that meeting. Town meeting, however, you do. You have to have yes. a physical location. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a couple of points. Um, I think this. This bill is that passed the House is basically certain to pass the Senate and be um, signed by the governor. So I don't think we need to worry about whether that's going to happen or not. Um, I, I also, I, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, when the select board discussed this last time, we actually did already authorize the town to put everything on Australian ballot, um, all, the, all the elections, everything that could be voted upon. Um, and we did actually um, say that we were gonna mail out all ballots. So I think considering what Joyce is saying here tonight that we should undo that decision, mm -hmm. it does seem quite onerous to put the town clerk's office through that process and mm -hmm. it doesn't, it, yeah, I'm, 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 I would be okay with going through the, the, the process that Joyce described in, instead, um, sending out a postcard um, describing to voters what is going on. Um, but I think we do need to um, be specific about that so that we're undoing what we said last time we discussed this. Another thing to be aware of, and I believe the figure is $2 million, the Joint Fiscal Committee has allocated $2 million. That hasn't passed yet, Jay, has it, uh, by the House of the Senate. But they made the recommendation that municipalities around the state 
um, have a pool of $2 million to tap into to supplement the uh, added costs of having mail-in ballots. I wonder if we couldn't even supplement some of the costs of mailing out the Australian, uh, the um, absentee ballot reminder from that pool if it's authorized. Um, I can say that based on the meeting that I attended on Monday, I re attended a remote meeting um, with all uh, a number of town clerks and with Will Senning, the director of elections. And he indicated at that time that um, if the monies are approved, the cost for mailing either re notices to people about um, voting that they have the opportunity to vote by absentee, or if towns chose to vote uh, to send ballots to all voters, that that money would, you know, th those two things would qualify for reimbursement. We would just need to be sure that we kept track of costs involved as far as if we have to print up uh, postcards, the postage, um, those items would be covered. Good, good. Uh, I, I would say that, you know, in our last meeting, we didn't know that that money was coming and we had decided to mail things out anyway. And in that spirit, I think that we should, um, hopefully that money will come through, but I think mm -hmm. we should tonight decide that we're gonna send out that postcard and do whatever we need to do Absolutely. in terms of mailing out absentee ballots, um, whether we receive that money or not. Hopefully yeah. we will get it. You know, I wasn't suggesting that that should have an impact on our decision. I was just pointing it out that it'll be there, hopefully. Okay, so it sounds like the first motion that we need is to reverse the prior decision and go to just mailing out a postcard uh, instructing people what they need to do if they want an absentee ballot. So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? No questions, Pat? Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stained? Motion carries. It didn't sound like we needed to make a decision on what we would do yet for actual town meeting day, that some of that we could plan later um, once we know what we got going on there. I, it may not be uh, a popular thing for me to point out, but if, uh, if things change dramatically between now and when our deadline is for submitting everything to our printer for the town report, um, we could bring to the board an option of holding either a special meeting or an emergency meeting to discuss any major changes that may have happened um, uh, or even to select a date or even to make other changes. So, you know, that's always a, an option that's available to the board. What is our printer deadline, Malcolm? Uh, I know it's typically a two week turnaround. We have to have uh, town reports available at least 10 days before town meeting. So that would put us at roughly about February 17th, February 16th. So we are looking at roughly about a deadline of January, late last week of January. Joyce, do you, do you have the calendar in front of you? Oh, you're on mute, Joyce. The last Friday is January 29th. Yeah. Sorry, Joyce, you're on mute. Joyce, you're on mute. Um, the town reports have to be available no later than February 20th. So if the, uh, if the printers need two weeks, you're looking at probably about February, the, you know, February 1st is probably the the last day you want to be yeah. Yeah. trying to do anything. Um, and the, the warning has to be posted um, no later than January 31st. And so the 31st is a Sunday, so I'm not going around posting warnings on a Sunday. <laughs> um, so that needs to be done by the Friday, which would be January 29th. And our warning for the most part is is complete with the exception of 
two items. Uh, Cliff and Joyce have both provided edits for changes to the previous uh, warning. So the, the base warning with the amounts and you know everything else is done. It's the exception of any changes that the board would like to make or the actual date for town meeting this year if any if any changes need to be made. And Joyce, your understanding of the town meeting, we would still advertise it as the actual town meeting day and then call it to order and give another day by which it'll actually take place. So the re town report would print it with the actual yeah. town with town meeting day in March. Yeah. Yes, it would show that the actual meeting would be the February 27th because we voted to hold the meeting the Saturday before town meeting. Um, and basically we would meet at the, the, the date and time. So it'd be the 27th at 10 a.m. Um, since we normally meet at Chandler, you could say we'll meet at Chandler. We could actually meet outside Chandler um, at 10 a.m. You just need three people to be there. Uh, the moderator to call the meeting to order, one person to make the motion, second person to vote, to second it, and then who's ever there to, to pass the motion. Okay, so that's setting that follow-up date doesn't impact the printers. That's right. Okay, so the only other items are whether the board wants to move forward um, the Randolph Center fire station tax exemption vote and the marijuana sales vote. So uh, let's take them one at a time. So we have the marijuana sales article that is, um, it's a statute, correct, Jay, that um, the town has to, does, it, does the statute require a townwide vote? Yeah, so the, the legislature, the, the cannabis legalization bill that the legislature passed uh, last session, or might have even been the one before, recently yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's basically requires towns uh individually to vote on the question of opting in or opting out of the the marijuana marketplace which uh is sure to take shape in 2022 um <clears throat> you can i think you can you can articulate the language of the question to be either uh, but ultimately, it's a yes or no question on whether or not Randolph is allowing participation in that or not. But it's a local control question, just similar to the to the one Joyce articulated uh, regarding ballots. It, it's um, kicking it to the towns to decide. Okay, is, is that a binding to vote? The select board? Is that a binding vote? It's it's. Um, it is. Yeah, it would be binding if you opted in, I believe, and if you opted out. I've heard that you can try again the next year, but I'm actually not certain about that. I mean, it's possible that that you're saying for good you can't. I, I, I'm not. I'm not clear on that. To be candid, if it's helpful, so, I could I could share my screen that shows the proposed. Um, <clears throat> article that Jay is presenting, and then also the recommendation from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So are you saying the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has put forward recommended language for? They have. Yeah. And I, I'll do that now. In fact, um, I think uh, maybe some of you have a copy of the, yeah, this is looks like what Josh Jerome drafted. Yeah, right here. <clears throat> so the issue, to me, with the language that was on the petitions that I was gathering, so it's, ah, it's okay. ambiguous. It, it's, um, it would be better, I think, for the voters to understand the question with a little bit more explanation. Um, it's, it's, it's just that doesn't feel like it has quite enough there. So there, there are essentially three different options um, in this scenario. One is 
um, and I'll highlight so that everybody sees these three options here. The first one is if, if we're only looking for cannabis retail, which is this proposed language here from VLCT, mm -hmm. then the second language is if we're only looking to authorize integrated licenses in Randolph. And then the third is if we're looking to authorize the sale of cannabis and integrated licenses in the town of Randolph. What does integrated licenses mean? Before, does that mean sale and cultivation? Larry, I, I, I'm not and familiar processing? with Processing? I mean, what? I believe that's the case. I think it's, I think it expands. This is the reason why I left that off of the petition because I want to, I think we should do this one step at a time. I'm not entirely uh, sound on, on what what it means to be an integrated licensee. And so I, I said, well, I guess we better not address that question if I can't even explain it fully. Well, there is a definition in a third paragraph about integrated licensee. Yeah. Just there above is. the yeah. overview of Act 164, last sentence. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Person licensed to engage in the activities of a cultivator also a product manager. Yeah, it's exactly what I thought it was. It, it basically opens it up to packaging, growing, cultivating, processing, manufacturing of edibles, I would imagine probably falls within that. Um, so can I, can I ask a question, maybe make a point? Um, so I, uh, one question is, um, this is a petition which is being, which, is, which was circulated and to get on the, um, on the town meeting day um, vote, right? And so I'm wondering why it wasn't submitted, you know, as, as a regular petition. Like, isn't, wouldn't that have been the intention to have had it just submitted well, like any other petition would be? And if, and, and why it wasn't submitted that way? Great question. Um, and the reason is because of, exactly what we're discussing now, which is um, if I had submitted it, it would, the, the language on the petition would be binding. You would not have a choice as to revising that language. Uh, today, I'm asking that you, that you do. Okay. Um, it just, it, it seems to me that we, as a as a town, unless we pass something that says otherwise, that it's this is not permitted, right? So as long as we do nothing, where it's not permitted, none of this stuff would be permitted, right? Indefinitely. You have to opt in. You have to have a a, a vote total that supports the question, the a yes answer to the opt in question uh, that's greater than the no portion in order for. And off to be legally allowed to participate in the retail market. And my my understanding of the petition process is at least the spirit of it is that it's something that is independent of the select board. Like you know, it's something that comes from a body other than this body. And so it seems it doesn't. I'm just not sure why we would want to be making this decision when it seems like it should be appropriately coming from the public that you know somebody who feels like this is important wants to get it in front of the voters i'm not maybe not saying this so well but you know it's a, yeah. i'm not so, sure why jay, jay how many signatures did you get i got a total of 174 signatures between the two so i didn't have enough on either but to me that that doesn't matter. What I have is a preponderance of support for both of these articles to go on to the town meeting day ballot, which is. And we do have the option as a select board to put things on the town meeting day ballot independent of the petition process, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Luis, how many signatures are needed? Roughly five, per we, we need 5% of the voting 100. population. I think that number changes, but Joyce, what is it like 180? It's like 170 something. Yeah, you're muted. Joyce, you're muted again, Joyce. Sorry, um, you needed 174 signatures as a minimum. 
um, for each petition. Um, I just have a question. Is there a, a deadline in that legislation for towns to opt in or opt out? I'm not certain. And you voted for it? You know, I, listen, <laughs> the reason I'm trying to put this on the ballot for 2021, for March 2nd, is because if Randolph does choose to allow this marketplace to exist, then why would we not want it to happen earlier than later? I mean, you hear people talking about missing the bus. I don't think there's necessarily a proverbial bus to miss, but let's just try and get on the earlier bus than the later one. I mean, that's the, and what I've done today and yesterday and the day before is gone around during a pandemic and I had ounces and ounces of hand sanitizer and, and I'll watch. Well, I thought you were going to say ounces and ounces of something else. For a <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I, did so, I did so much work <laughs> of pens and stuff, even though I feel as though I, I shouldn't have had to, but the point, what it, the point is that I have a lot of pages of support and I can continue to gather it if, you, if you'd like, but the law has always get, offered two options to the public to getting a question on the town meeting day ballot. One is to do it via petition, which would go above or around you all, the select board. And the other way is to ask you all, the select board, to uh, represent the interests of your town voters in, in this respect. I hear you. So, so just to be clear, though, none of this is going to be uh, go into effect until 2022, correct? Yeah. I mean, they're just in the process now of establishing this cannabis regulatory right. board and process. Right. The governor is seeking applicants for that right now. Right. Um, this is so, only, go ahead. Okay. This is only step one. You know, this gets it on the ballot. It's I actually I'm going to be candid with you all. I feel I feel like this is likely to be voted down by the town of Randolph. I just have a hunch. Um, it, I think it will be close. It would be you know close to 50 50. But the point is, we should ask the voters what they think about this question. And I think we should do it sooner because we will we will ultimately do it eventually. And um, you know, if if we do it this year, it will give you all a great deal of time between now and 2022, as Tom just mentioned, to uh, figure out how to regulate it responsibly and make sure that, uh, you know, you're not going to have high schoolers, uh, you know, getting their hands on it if, if we can, if we can prevent that. What's your feeling about the integrated license issue? Um, as you're putting this forward, you're only talking about retailers, but we have a significant agricultural community I here that perhaps we should consider giving them the option too. I'm just putting it out there. I, I would certainly support that. And as I said before, the language that I put on the petition was uh, just erring on the side of simplicity so that it would take fewer minutes to explain to each signatory what it means that they're, what they're putting their name on. Um, yeah. But I do agree with you, Tom, that the aggregate, the agricultural community would feel bummed if, if we didn't include that uh, yeah. based on that definition. Yeah. So I do want to point something out here. You know, this is discussion and action from the floor. Right. So this so is I, not an Australian ballot item. So how that's, you, where it's, that's where it's warranted right now. It says right here for discussion and action from the floor. This is sitting in that category. This would be very similar to the climate action change article from last year that uh, was discussed on the floor um, and you know everyone had a comment and I'm sorry where are you seeing that Perry is that in the document that Adolfo article shared? it's article number 30. It's Marijuana the draft ballot the draft oh okay. yeah I mean that's where it is now. that's where it is right. now but but so, you know do you but but we've authorized the Australian ballot there is no discussion from the floor this year. Well, then I, so well, why to know about that? I mean, you've got to hit sitting here. I mean, what are you going to, is this what you're understand. putting out or not? Is everything that's on here now going to be Australian ballot? Because that's not how this is reading. What's it, the point of having a town meeting and postponing it and recessing it if you're going to have these articles on an Australian ballot? 
It, it could be that because I used uh, an older template. I didn't take off the the header from the, you know, at, at okay. Well, I'm a little confused because no. I'm trying to get to the points. What's the point of having a town meeting and postponing it, recessing it, if all these things are going to be voted on from Australian ballot? My my understanding is that the only reason why we would have a an actual town meeting at some later date is to consider items from the floor which are not being voted on by Australian ballot. Things that, you know, every year someone just brings something up that they want to discuss and we would be giving people that possibility. Well, we don't vote on those. They have to be warned. It can be advisory. Yeah, it could be advisory, okay. Yeah. But so is like this or not, is this, is, so is this or is this not going to be on the ballot? That's, you know, my well, question here. That's what we're determining. That's, Madam Chair, permission to speak. I, I, that's what I'm asking of the select board is to make that the case. Yeah, that you put that on the, the question on the ballot. The Australian ballot. Yeah. And you, and that you word it the way that you see it to be most ex, explanatory. I think, Larry, some of the difference of this one is um, the other articles that people get petitions for are for their own items, like the tax exemption for the senior center or the station or whatnot. This is actually legislation that came through advising towns that they have to take some action to opt in. And although I think you're right, if we never took any action, we're by default opting out. But it also gives us the ability to manage the, what goes out there in that to kind of control how that all happens. So we don't just opt in and it's a free for all. You know, we could do the language. So we're opting in, but giving it to the planning commission to look at, you know, developing what that looks like. You know, where is it allowed? What types are allowed? you know, those type of things. And then it comes back to the select board to have to adopt that ordinance. So I think some of the difference is that this is coming down through a legislative decision, right? To give it to the towns to decide, but it's also, a, I think what Jay's handing to us is the ability to craft the language mm -hmm. for this article in a way that actually gives us as the select board and the planning commission or whoever else we decide a little bit more say in the direction by which if it's voted yes that would play out precisely yeah i'd be all for that i mean i think you just have, definitely should put it to all the voters yeah and i i think you should include um all of the options too whether it's farming processing retailing um Oh, absolutely. Because it opens up, uh, it opens up the opportunity. If it's approved, it just broadens the the, the palette of various businesses that could potentially um, operate here in town. I, mean, I don't, I don't see any sense of having a you know a, a marijuana distributor at the retail level, let's say in the village, and and denying one of our farmers the right to convert their property to to hemp or or cannabis production, it's, it, it sort of seems like a slap in the face to the agricultural community, assuming well, that the people, you know. Yeah, the agricultural community, whoever's involved is going to have to come up with some substantial, this is not just gonna be grown in the field, obviously, as you know. So any, any agricultural entity that's gonna, is gonna make a substantial investment into infrastructure to, to, to grow this and secure it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and similarly, Jay's, he's handing uh, the select board the opportunity to say uh, whether it's through the planning commission or what uh, you know I don't I don't want to see a um, a retail cannabis operation happening within um, you know 500 feet of the high school or you know a uh, hundred a thousand yards of the high school or whatever um, I think well, that's where I think we need the community input you know, yeah. So if it does go through the planning commission, you know, then the planning commission can address that and hold those public exactly. hearings that they're looking at this. And if it's helpful, um, most of our sensitive areas like our, like our park and the schools, 
there are a, they are in um, you, know, you know I'm not looking at the map now, but they're typically in the um, um, uh, medium density district or mm -hmm. high density area where uh, a, a cannabis sales place would, would qualify as a, a retail location, retail sales, and those types of retail sales, whether it's cannabis or whether it's like a supermarket or whatever it is, would not be allowed in those districts, or if they are, it would be through special permission from the DRB. Right. Um, so it's not like the variance. Yeah, it's not like they would be eligible to be plopped down by our sensitive areas. And it'd probably be no different than alcohol use too. I mean, you've got to have select board approval to be able to sell it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But the planning commission can do a separate overlay for this too. Right. You can That's true identify areas that you don't want these different activities taking place so you get your parks and in your schools and you know mm -hmm. maybe there's a, a you know a daycares i don't know whatever but um you know you have that ability to actually flesh this out and get better detail of mm -hmm. what you want where and how you want it the issue is right now is um if we want to allow this to go forward as an article on the ballot and if we do how we want it worded and do we need to make that decision tonight in terms of the wording or could we direct um could we direct adolfo to work on and the town staff to work on <clears throat> the wording and approve it at a later date prior i know it might require a special meeting but um we're going to have that meeting anyway, Tom, to approve the final ballot. That's right? true. Yeah. So I think it, I think directing Adolfo to work on language for that that gets presented to the board for approval to include on the draft ballot is perfectly fine. Yeah. That, that sounds good to me. I, I must say that, um, you know, I, I'm not opposed to putting this on the ballot in principle, but it seems like a fairly weighty issue and having to decide tonight um, feels a little, a little rugged. Can I ask a couple of procedural questions, Janie? Sure. Um, the first one is, in this case, if the town voted yes or no, or if they voted yes, opt in, then we'd have to do an ordinance or what if we didn't do anything? Would they, or do we have to do an ordinance to control it somehow? Is that part well, of the would imagine, Well, you don't have to, right? You could just say, have at it. But I would think a responsible way to look at it would be to toss it to the planning commission. And we could put that even in the article that, you know, should, should the voters authorize the planning commission to develop, um, you know, the, an ordinance or a overlay or however we looked at it. But, you know, I would think you wouldn't want to just turn it loose. You would want to somehow tie it to getting an ordinance or getting an overlay of where it would be allowed or whatnot. It, it seems to me like it's not very responsible just to vote it in and walk away. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but they would have to, any ordinance that was created could not conflict with whatever had passed at town meeting, right? The wording of what had passed. I would imagine oh. that's true. Yeah, that's- I mean, any, any ordinance you pass is gonna have to be passed by the select board anyways. So you're gonna get to review it, correct? That's correct. So, you know, we get final say, or the select board at the time will get final say in how it goes down. If they don't like mm -hmm. it, they can send it mm -hmm. back to the planning commission. We, I guess I'm asking, we would have the ability to restrict it to some extent. Is that? Oh, yeah. With the authorizing legislation? Yes. But we want to put that in our, in the article that we pass. Right, so the voters know that a thumbs up on this means it is going to go to the planning commission to develop how it'll play out in town. 
Okay, I, I just want to make sure that we're doing it correctly. Not taking sides, but just whether we do it correctly. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Joyce too. If we meet on Saturday, we don't have to put the town meeting off till another date. We could, what if we wanted to have it complete as of that day? What's the purpose of putting it off? If you're going to hold the meeting, uh, yeah, basically, um, if you're going to hold a physical meeting, it's got to meet the guidelines that are put out by the agency. Uh, what is it? ACA, whatever it is. ACCD. 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 Um, you have to maintain certain social distancing. Uh, capacity for the building has to be, I, I believe they cannot be more than 75 people. And those 75 people have to be so many feet apart throughout the building. Um, so you have to meet all the guidelines uh, for, for that, that are laid out. If you can't meet those guidelines, then you cannot meet in person. The, the other alternative, though, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that we could hold the town meeting by Zoom or some no. other. No? No. no we can't do by that statute, okay. and, and, and that's been the rub. Okay, statute, there you go. All right. It says, you know, voters will meet on the second, you know, the first Tuesday of March to meet and vote on town business. In person in person. So we have to hold a town meeting at some point in person. You're required to still hold a town meeting, which is why you would have to recess it to a later date. It would have been ideal if the legislature would have allowed for the, the canceling of town meeting this year, but um, I, you know, I, I don't know why they didn't allow that to happen, but. Can you speak to that, Jay? And, and was there any discussion in Montpelier about allowing much the same as 162 kind of change things for this COVID time period? Was there any discussion about waiving the in-person uh, I mean, requirement? Back to the local control question. I mean, these town meeting is meant for to deal with a number of questions, um, budgetary items, you know, you can't outright cancel town meeting and therefore not have a vote it's you know you have was, to have, no. but we did cancel town meeting you know town meeting is not going to happen and then this is this is alternative to town meeting of the voting process and that's what most of tonight's discussion between you right all. right um it's not that we said no you can't cancel town meeting we required everybody to cancel town meeting and decide if they would hold an alternative to town meeting at another time whatever combination of, um, you know, however you answer the, the annual questions that voters, that voters decide on in Vermont. Uh, and when uh, separating that from the, from the actual meeting, you know, that you can have the meeting later or you can. Yeah. Not. So, it well, just seems like. Tom, to give you a little more detail, I think the challenge that we, that we face here, and I think every town faces, is that um, I think the legislature had the option to say, well, uh, let me take a step back and say, residents of every town can convene a special meeting, a special town meeting, and then vote to cancel town meeting. But the problem is residents still have to get together to hold that town meeting to cancel town wow. meeting. Yeah. And the challenge is that um, it, the challenge is that the legislature could have just said we're canceling the re that requirement for everyone to come together to force them to vote to cancel town meeting because it defeats the purpose of uh, you know canceling of getting together and preventing everybody from getting together. So I, I, I'm not in the legislature. I was I wasn't around to you know propose a bill, but you know it would have been because we are a Dillon's rule state. We could only do what the legislature allows us to do. So. If, if the bill that was passed included something that says select boards may cancel select board, uh, the special, you know, town meeting and hold it later, you know, the, the next year when the pandemic is over, 
but the bill as proposed is essentially saying you, you, you have to have town meeting. It just has to be later in the year at a later time. But we but, could come together and then vote to not come back together until next February. That's true. Yeah. Which de facto cancels could, it. Could, could we put, hmm, could we put such a decision to cancel town meeting until next uh, March uh, on the Australian ballot? I don't see why not. I mean, there's a there's a possibility. Um, just do an end run around. Well, then, do an end run around the meeting in person. You know, voting from the floor requirement, and just say shall the shall the citizens of Randolph in, uh, approve of postponement of town meeting. I mean, I, everything they're going to vote on, they're voting on on by Australian ballot. So it seems. Um, excessively bureaucratic. I know the law didn't, the legislature didn't address it, but it just seems kind of silly to have three people meet on the steps of Chandler on, on the first, you know, Tuesday in March, just to postpone a meeting at which nothing will be discussed later in the year. It's, yeah, it does. Well, I think you, it does. You it, I, I don't have the, I don't have the bill in front of me, but my, my recollection is that the bill gives select, select boards the power to postpone the meeting, that we could decide that now. Right. We don't have to I think have... the, reason, the, reason, the reason for that is just because some communities probably could still have a town meeting. They're not, maybe they don't have that big a population. And yeah. maybe they some, have the space. And, and some towns- So some that's towns why are, I think they did it. Yeah, yeah. And, and some towns are gonna be postponing their meeting to sometime in May so they can get things voted on and do it outside just in time for budgets to pass and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, right. I, if I'm not mistaken, I, I think we can just decide tonight that we want town meeting to be postponed. We could say, we're just gonna have it on June 1st and we don't have to worry about any of that budgetary stuff because we're gonna do all that on by Australian ballot. And we don't have to have any kind of in-person meeting on town on our normal town meeting day. Precisely. The challenge is we don't know what June first is going to bring. Yeah, we might be safer going with like August first or something like we, that. We could do whatever. I mean, we could just say it's going to be outside. I mean, there's there's not going to be much to discuss, and pe very few people are going to. I mean, we have enough trouble getting people to show up for town meeting under best circumstances. I don't think this town meeting is going to have more than a handful of people at it anyway. Could I, could I say uh, something? I don't want to be out of order. Hang on just a second, Ian. The, um, so the, the decision then, well, do we want to go with a different date? On this, or, or can we? Because the voters actually voted for when we would be meeting. Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I have to look up the statute, but I think every conversation that we've had about moving the actual town meeting day um, required us to have the voters approve the change. And we did that two years ago right. to move it to the Saturday right. before town meeting day. But the, the legislature's authorized us to move the date. So uh, doesn't that supersede? My understanding of the, the um, legislation is the select board will have the option to move the date of, of town meeting. If they move the date of town meeting, you're also moving the date of the Australian ballot. Oh, no, really? That so was my is... understanding. I, I may be wrong. That, that was the impression that I got from the meeting on Monday, with the discussion with Will Senning, um, is that if you move the meeting, you're moving the Australian ballot, um, and then you all you vote all that later on. Um, How does that impact select board terms or town clerk terms or if any of By moving the meeting, anybody who currently is serving would continue to serve until the new vote. So if you were to move the meeting to June yes. right now and, and we move the Australian ballot, 
Um, in my particular case, I intend to retire March 2nd or March 3rd, whatever. Um, if you were to move that to June 1st, that means that I would need to continue to serve until June 1st. However, if you do that, I'm resigning March 3rd. <laughs> So I'd like, okay. to, I'd like to go back to the first suggestion, which is hold town meeting, recess it, have the Australian ballot. And at that point in time, we'll have more guidance and maybe we recess it until May. Maybe we have to recess it until June, but I'm pretty confident that we're not going to be holding town meeting until the public gathering size is allowed you know, to, to let that happen. And I don't know where that limitation is now, but I know over the summer it was 150 people and I think it's even less now. So that would be my suggestion. Just, you know, hold the meeting, recess, you know, go into make a motion to recess it and move it to a future date. And that way you can still have your Australian ballot. Well, I like the idea of putting it as an article too. Do we recess it till next February or do they really want something in May or June? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, if we could put it on the Australian ballot, it'd be interesting to explore that possibility because what's there going to be to talk about after everybody has voted on the Australian ballot. Not uh, much. Yeah. And you, the only thing you have to do is let, elect put people to the budget committee. That's usually what you do from the floor. So you wouldn't yeah. be doing that right off the bat. So those people would just have to continue serving. So can we get VLCT to weigh in on this? You know, could we do that? Can we do what we just talked about? Put that second, you know, put the meeting actually on the ballot? So do I our could reach out to VLCT. To be yes or no? Yeah. And so do when we put questions on the ballot, do they have to be in a yes or no format? Yes. Or can yes, yes be, or no? So we can't have uh, give them an option where one option is delay it until May or June. And the other option is cancel it all together. No. no, it has to be yes or no answers. And as far as budget committee, where we normally would nominate them from the floor of the meeting, if the people who are currently are serving plan to run again, they just need to do a consent form where we can vote them Australian ballot like we do everything else. If they agree to that, correct. If they mm -hmm. agree to it, yes. Yeah. So if we want to put the uh, question on the ballot of town meeting day, do we put the question so it is, shall the town of Randolph cancel the in-person portion of town meeting or is it shall the town of Randolph move that portion to a May or June date, if it's got to be yes or no. Or but if, if you've already recessed it to a date definite, which I would think you would have to, Joyce, that vote's going to come after, right? Correct. So it's not going to mean anything. Unless it's you word Saturday. it correctly. <laughs> Depends on how you word it. So in your wording, or in your motion on Saturday, you might say, unless so voted so by Australian say, ballot or something. You could also say that it's recessed until a date determined by the select board following the yeah. information coming in from the voting. Does, does you, it have to be before a certain date this year? I've heard, I've heard some discussion on the clerk's listserv where a couple of clerks have indicated that they're looking at starting a meeting and then they're saying we're recessing it to next year. So, ah, wow. I think Terry like may, be, may have the best suggestion, have VLCT kind of weigh in on this dilemma, but if we could put it off for the full year, it seems. Like that might be the best way to go, and then put budget committee uh, people on on the Australian ballot. You know, reach out to whoever the current people are serving, and or invite others to step forward. Well, if nobody fills the vacancy, then we can appoint them later. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't like that. If somebody decides not to run and we have a vacancy, we can do that at a select board meeting down the road. We've done that in the past. That's true. Haven't they all decided to run, Joyce? 
Um, I believe Cliff reached out to uh, the budget committee, and I believe I, I know that I got one consent form already from one budget committee member. I haven't seen any others yet. They have until Monday the 25th to submit their uh, consent forms. So it would only be one that would be up for election, one or two? I think there's a... I think it's three because of the quirks of um, the way things transpired last year. Yeah. I think we've got a three-year term, a two-year term, and finishing out the balance of the term that was resigned last year that David Silloway got appointed to. Yeah. So I was just looking at the bill and it, it doesn't seem as far as I can tell to say that we can change items that we would normally vote on in person to Australian ballot items. That was in the Act 162. Yeah, that was okay. in Act. That yeah. wasn't in, 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 in H48? That was no. In H48. OK. That's the okay. Act 162. Yeah. OK. OK, so let's see if we can wind some of these down. Um, as far as the meeting itself, do we want to, um, we, we need the votes to go forward for the budgets and whatnot. So it sounds like we don't have much choice, but to meet on the steps with the three people thing. The question is whether we, uh, extend it for a year or we extend it for a few months or whatever till we can meet outside. And that will be potentially putting an article on the ballot to vote on. Is that where we're at with this one? Mm. And, and how do we manage only three people uh, showing up, uh, the moderator <laughs> and two people to make the motion? I mean, suppose somebody else wants to show up and I don't quite understand how we manage that. Um, you just have to advertise it very heavily that the intent of holding the, a physical meeting would be to recess it to a later okay. date when it's okay. safer to meet. Right. And I, I think if the meeting description said, um, uh, you know, town meeting on February 27th will be held on the steps of Chandler outdoors, I think that'll prevent a lot of people from wanting to be outdoors on the steps mm -hmm. February 27th. Especially just to recess the meeting and reschedule yeah. it. Right, right. <laughs> I just can't, I can't imagine anybody's going to be a gadfly and try and you know upend that process. I just stay six feet away. <laughs> Put your mask on. Don't get near me. <laughs> uh, so, do we want to put an article? on the ballot to figure out if people want to cancel it all together or they want to reschedule it for some time in the summer? Or do we want to have the select board make that decision? Hmm. Well, canceling it and moving it to a date in the summer are two different questions, right? So they're actually those are basically our two options, right? Right, but but we either reschedule it to a later date, or we cancel it by rescheduling it till next February. Right. So hypothetically, if you hold a meeting on the steps and you make a motion to recess the meeting at that point in time, would you also make a motion to would you pick a date and say, and that you know we'd move it to say May first at that same time? And if you did, then you could hold, if it still couldn't gather, you could hold a meeting on May 1st and you could recess it till July 15th or something. Could you do that? Yeah. I think that might be the best way to attack this is make a motion you know, at the steps and this is gonna be the new town meeting date. And if we're not able to have it, we hold the meeting and recess it again till the next available mm -hmm. we think window. Yeah, yeah. I think that's cleaner. 
it is. I, I, I question why we would need to do it in May or June, though. No, why not just push it out far enough? So you can go that, to August if you want to. Yeah, uh, so that so that we have a reasonable chance, unless things take off again. Um, yeah. Right now, it looks like general populace vaccinations are probably going to kick in around early spring, like April 1st, something around then. So I think doing it in May or June would be a little bit premature. A little early, yeah. Yeah. We can talk about that date, you know, as we get further down the road. There's nothing, we don't have to make that decision tonight because we've got until February, whatever, 29th yeah. here to make that decision. We could yeah. talk amongst ourselves and say, okay, I'm, let's recess it till August 1st. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So the only question that we have to decide tonight is if we wanted to put something on the ballot asking the voters if they wanted to cancel it all together or move it out into the summer. Yeah. And it, it can't be either or, right? So yes. No, because it has to be a yes or no answer so those that have to be can't we do our own slip of paper joyce so there's six of them <laughs> <laughs> if it's helpful we could um if i could suggest if there are two questions one question could be uh should the voters wish to cancel town meeting and reconvene in 2022 and if that fails then the next question can be dependent on you know Article 34, if meeting is to be held this year, shall the meeting be held on like August? You can't write a question that's dependent on another question. Oh, uh, okay. All right. The only way we can get an answer of preference on that is with a total separate ballot that gives the voters a choice. And I think we just, let's just roll with it and we'll figure this out later on. Yeah. Uh, because we're just bogging down on that issue. And I don't know that we really need voter input on that. And if we did, we could do, we can find another, we're gonna have, probably have to find another way to get the temperature yeah. of folks. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're back to the two articles that Jay has brought forward and we hashed out, um, we hashed out one of them pretty good. The cannabis one, yeah. Yeah. Um, the the question of the of the Randolph Center Firehouse uh, um, has been on the ballot for two or three successive town meetings that I've been to, um, with a one year extension, and the petition that Jay circulated. Um, and referenced earlier, talked about a five-year extension. Um, and I'm just wondering how people feel about that. And Jay, what, what your thinking was, um, you, you mentioned you got sure. um, numbers. So, so, so on Monday night, the, the monthly business meeting uh, at the Randolph Center Firehouse took place, and I suggested to the to the squad that, you know, maybe we ought to just extend it for one year because the reason that it's been in one year increments these past several uh, is because the question, this legal or this insurance question, I think between the town of Randolph and the Randolph Center Fire Association has yet to be resolved in a permanent. Right. Or in some kind of permanent agreement. Um, for what reasons, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I know that the most likely reason that it didn't, that wasn't solved this past year was because of this, this pandemic. So I said, geez, why don't we just ask them to, to put, put it on, put it on as a one year uh, extension uh, because that's how they usually put it. And uh, I was uh, over, I was um, voted uh, that I didn't, succeed in, in convincing they said let's no let's go for the five year <laughs> well i'm sure they did but if it's helpful um i can share with everyone that it yes it was five years for many years 
Um, the change from five to one year was not made administratively. It was made through a motion by the voters mm -hmm. at town meeting. Um, and the, the change was made so that it would allow the town and the association to negotiate, find mm -hmm. a resolution to it. Um, you know, I, the board can do, uh, absolutely can do what it likes, but I, I feel that if it switches from one year back to five years without a resolution, it would go counter to the, the wishes well, of the voters. My, my other concern is this is the second or third year in a row that we have punted this issue down for another year. And I certainly wouldn't want to punt it for five years. Um, that seems I antithetical see. to the intention of going to one year. I'm sorry the pandemic intervened and we've gone through another year of not resolving this issue, but it kind of feels like we need to, you know, um, put the pedal to the metal and get it done in this coming year. And I certainly wouldn't want to extend it to five years. Yeah. There, is, there has been progress made, I can't share with everyone, from when the voters switched from five to one year. Uh, we, we now have, you know, more of engagement happening with, with uh, the fire association in Randolph Center. Uh, there has been a committee that has formed, you know, granted it was, you know, it was a time of a pandemic that stopped the work, but there is an official committee now that has been established with a membership. And I do think we are, we're moving in that direction. So, you know, if, if the select board were to choose to keep it at a year, as opposed to five, I think it would, it would help to keep the issue on the front burner. Mm -hmm. I would like to move, uh, that we put the question uh, on the Australian ballot with a one year extension. I'm gonna get in a second. I'll second that, Tom. Okay. To move it, I mean, I'd, we're not gonna gain anything not putting this on the ballot and not no. voting on this tax exemption because the town's going to pay the tax. We pay the the operating costs of that fire department right now and that's what the whole issue is is that we've got this this quirky setup there that keeps impacting how things work and ownership of equipment and all that and <laughs> the bottom line the town pays the bill. So, you know, it Unfortunately, we didn't get to the table this year and we didn't get this resolved. Would love nothing more than to see this resolved and go away because it's it's taking mm -hmm. a lot of time and resources that are just better spent elsewhere. But um, maybe Jay would like to join in that discussion with us and help us resolve it. And in exchange, we'll put a one year <laughs> tax. <laughs> we don't want to go this for that, but um, yes, I, would I do have an interest in trying to help resolve uh, mm -hmm. that. Great. So we have a motion and a second on the table for this. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. The other uh, issue out there is the cannabis one. And we had talked about a motion to have town staff draft the article circulate it to the board and present it on the final paper. My mind just went blank. Yeah, yeah. For the voting. And that's where we were at with that one. I, I would like to make that motion that we direct, um, direct the um, town administration to and town staff to work on the wording of that and present it to us for a final approval. Second that. Would that be would that be run by the league too at some point? So. I I could check with the league on the final language. Um, you know, it definitely would. The league has been involved already in creating a template and examples, so I would I would check with with the league and our attorney as well. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stained. Motion carries. 
Are there any outstanding items that we need to do for town meeting? Not, we still have the town report to hit. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. I'm going to sign off. I really appreciate all your time and your thoughtful work on all these very arduous issues and the exciting ones. So thanks a lot. Take care, Jay. Bye, Jay. The town report, we know we have a deadline of February 1st at the latest to get it to the printers. That's right. We're we're working. Emery's uh, pedal to the metal, trying to collect all of the necessary uh, reports that committees need to submit and everything else. So um, I don't recall the volunteer to draft the select board message, but if they could get that to Emery within the next week or two, that would be ideal. Yeah, I volunteered for that. I I already uh, I already oh, volunteered for that. Yeah, you did. I must have missed I, that. I thought Trini was going to do that. No, Trini, Trini handed it off to uh, handed that one oh. off to, to me. Oh, oh. A little <laughs> wonderful. Little double yeah, fake, like double, little double yeah. fake action there. Um, my question is, what is the time frame for the annual report? In other words, what what dates should I be writing about select board actions between? It's usually within the last, um, the last. It's like a year in review. Um, so it's from last town meeting to this town meeting, roughly. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just I wasn't entirely certain about that, mm -hmm. so that's fine. Um, Trini, I, I would like to um, maybe just have a separate conversation with you about um, some bullet points that I should address in that report, but I don't know that we need to have that as a um full select board discussion that's appropriate yeah, we can chat okay uh and the other item remaining for the town report um uh, emory had sent over uh photographs from a previous meeting and then additional outreach had been performed to try to obtain additional photographs to be considered for um, for the mostly for the cover because every photograph not selected for the cover we send to the printers and then they use as space fillers when needed. Um, so I wasn't sure if the board had a preference of all the photographs that we have collected to place on the cover, or if there's something else that they would like for us to go and photograph, we can head out to photograph and share that through email with everyone. Uh, one thing I can send to Emery is the um, you've already got a photo of the sculpture that's gone into the Elm Street garden, but um, I also, uh, given that we've gotten the grant and, and local fundraising all wrapped up for the mural project, I have a artist rendering of what that mural project is going to look like. If that's appropriate, we might, um, we might include that. It's not a photograph, it's an artist rendering, but might. Yeah, it'd be something to add to the report for sure. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll send that to you tomorrow. Thank you. Now, were, was, were you proposing using the one that said town report on it as the cover? No. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have a, a, a recommendation to, to make to the board. It really is up to, to the board. Any writing that is on any of the photographs were or was included by the person that submitted the photograph. So yeah, thanks for catching that, Trini. Um, it's not a recommendation we're making. That's just what was submitted to us in that way. So the one that says town report on it isn't a suggestion for the front cover? Uh, not from staff. It could be from... Sunny, but not from staff. Okay, because I was thinking I like the idea of something that actually relates to Randolph being on the front cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like a building or, you know, like East Randolph Hall, since we're working on that, or there were two or three that I sort of flagged as possibilities. 
wondered what other people thought. I'd be good with the town hall. East Randolph Hall. Yeah. There's three votes. The one I, I kind of oh. like the little girl sitting next to the fence with her cow. Might be a little partial to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the <laughs> <laughs> is that your cow? No, it's our son's, but that's my granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. A little patronage here. <laughs> I was just going to comment anytime we have any pictures of kids in the town report, we need to be sure we have yeah. permission. Yeah, we've yeah. got the permission, but it's also not showing her face. It's from the back of her head intentionally. <laughs> If we showed her face, it would be too cute. <laughs> <laughs> a humble family. Yeah, you know it. Uh, I did have a request from Josh to try to get some pictures of uh, snowmobiling. Um, and I think he said it would be nice to put some of those in the town report, but also for some of the marketing materials. So we're working on that also. <laughs> I don't have any snowmobiles, have but I did. Oh, I got some I have extra some of photos. Okay, I was going to say, I have some sure. from Winterfest from two years ago with snowmobiles, if you're looking. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to know when they're from, necessarily. Right. Yeah. So did we decide on the East Randolph Hall for the front cover? I think we had three votes for it. That's enough, right? Sure. I'm fine with that. Um, but nice little, I would, nice uh, little piece of history, and it's in East Randolph, so it gets us out of the village fix, you know, fix too. So it would help fundraising, I would think. Yeah, I think so. Would that, would that be the front view of the community hall? Yes. Thank you. But I'm not opposed to you, somebody going over and trying to get a better picture. I think those were snapshots that folks took and some of them are nice, but they're not. If you look, kind of the cropping is a little off. Just saying. Um, Josh has a, uh, uh, like a high powered digital camera, um, large scale one. So we could potentially snap some better shots, maybe try to pick a sunny day. Yeah, get the whole building in there. Yeah. And it's really pretty when, right after it snows. We'll, we'll pick a few and then we'll, um, we'll pick the best looking one. So, you know, now that we know what this, what the select board wants, the view, we can take the best one of that view and then put it in. That's good. Okay, what else do we need for the town report? Is that the last? That was the last of it. Needed, uh, and then staff can work the other pictures in. That's right. Yeah, we can we can um, pepper them in and ask the printer to just spread them around. Great, um, uh, Adolfo. I can and, and Emery. I can draft. Um, in addition to doing the select board report, I can draft a paragraph as I did last year for the Arts and Culture Committee as well. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah. And two weeks is enough time. Yeah. Oh, sometime next week. Next would week would be okay. ideal. Fine. Fine. Thank you. Sure. Uh, next up, we have the draft budget and capital plan. We just wanted to follow up on a few of the questions that the board had previously asked. Um, one of the questions was related to costs for household hazardous waste. Um, we, or I was finally able to connect with um, the uh, a &R staff member that uh, manages the uh, solid waste program that includes HHW events. Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, all towns and cities in Vermont are required to participate in, in these events. Um, towns, may, towns and cities may go at it alone and they have their own event or they can do what Randolph is doing and join an alliance and spread the cost over several towns. Um, so um, that that is a cost that we cannot 
we cannot eliminate, we can only reduce over time as we add more towns to the Mountain Alliance. So um, that, that was an answer for household hazardous waste um, costs. The other was related to cemeteries. Uh, we know that that's more of a long-term um, issue to address because we have to take, um, we have to you know, take better tracking of staff time as they work at the cemeteries. But um, we did hear from our cemetery commissioner that uh, you know, we, we can propose increases in certain fees. Um, that won't be the biggest hit you know, in terms of revenue, um, generating revenue, but it's, it's a start that'll get, it gets us going in the right direction. Anybody have any questions on the proposed budget? Hearing none, any questions on the proposed capital plan? The only change that I can share with everyone to the capital plan was what the select board approved at the last meeting, which was just increasing the amount for, for paved roads. Right. Hearing no questions, do we have any emotions, motions to approve? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Other business? Uh, no other business. Can I go back to one thing, Trini, when you have time? Yep. Article 32. Could you just explain that to me? General fund surplus not necessary to level taxes. What does that mean? I mean, I think I know what it means, but what does it mean? Um, are we, oh, we're talking about the draft warrant? Yes. Sorry. Let me uh, open it here. Article 32. The one that got left off last year. Oh, um, yeah. That what we're talking about. If there's a if there's a surplus at the end of the year, then uh, we first would have to let's say, for example, there was a, a hurricane or an emergency, and the town had to dip into the emergency reserve fund. The surplus that's left over would first have to. Um, um, make whole the emergency reserve fund. And then any monies that are left over then could then be allocated to a specific reserve fund that we that, that we identify. In this case, it would break down into whatever whatever funds are left over, it would break down into the allocation of 20% for the gravel roads reserve and 80% to the highway paving reserve. So to level taxes, you're saying that means an emergency basically. Right, yeah, and it also gives the board the opportunity that if there is a deficit at the end of the year, the board can then say, okay, we're gonna use the surplus to make up for the deficit that we had. Um, and it also gives the option of being able to allocate funds into different reserve funds if there is any money left over. Thank you. Sure. All right. On to manager's report. Uh, I just have one one item. Uh, the the town had been working with a nonprofit firm to have a income survey performed of the uh, Randolph Village Water District. We this has been ongoing for the better part of the last six months, seven months. Uh, we received a report today that confirms that we have. Um, what's called the LMI score, it's a low middle income level for the water district at coming in at 54.4%. Um, in order for us to be eligible for 
uh, community development block grant funds, we have to have a percentage higher than 51%. So we actually met the threshold with a brand new income survey. So that's gonna make us eligible for the half million dollar CDBG grant. So now we're going to include the report in our application. We're gonna upload it to uh, the state so that they can consider it for their meeting in April and hopefully it'll give us another half million dollars for their reservoir project. Um, and that's it. That's what I have to share during the manager's report. Great. Next up, we have executive session. Make a motion that we go into executive session. Um, and and invite uh, Adolfo. Inviting Adolfo, Tom. Um, yeah, we'd invite Adolfo into the executive session. I'll second that. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.